Hey guys, Miss Algar here, and you're watching the modeling of using modifiers in narrative prose. Some of you are asking, Miss Algar, how are we supposed to do this? How are we supposed to translate the material that you've given us and use it in our narrative prose? Well, I'm going to show you the model that I wrote on my own, and let's quickly go over what these words mean. Now, narrative prose is a story told through action. So there's a lot of description going on here of events. That's what we're looking at there. In terms of modifiers, we're looking at clauses or phrases that add more information to the sentence, to the main clause. Okay, so what works with modifiers in narrative prose is that it gives us more detail while varying sentence structure. So let's quickly take a look at the scene that I chose. I chose a very short scene. I wasn't going to do the full scene with you guys here, but um, you may recognize this from Act 1, Scene 1, in which the fight has broken out between the House of the Montagues and the House of the Cap Capulets after Tybalt. Tybalt comes in and really instigates and tries to make the fight a lot worse than it should have been. So, we see here, enter an officer and three or four citizens with clubs or partisans. Officer, clubs, bills, and partisans, strike, beat them down. Citizens, down with Capulets, down with the Montagues. Enter old Capulet, or Julius dad, in his gown and his wife. Capulet, what noise is this? Give me my long sword, ho. Lady Capulet, a crutch, a crutch, why call you for a sword? Capulet. My sword, I say, old Montague is come and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Enter old Montague, or Romeo's father, and his wife, Montague. Thou villain Capulet, hold me not and let me go. Lady Montague, thou shalt not stir one foot to seek a foe. So we see here, right? This is our first kind of introduction to the patriarchs of the House of the Capulet and the House of the Montagues. And we see also the reaction, or at least the way that the citizens of the town view the, view the two families, the few, two feuding families. So how is it that I turned all of this information into a piece of narrative prose? So let's quickly read through what I had written for my narrative prose. Drawn by the sudden shouts in the square, an officer of the law runs in, followed by citizens armed with clubs. Face red with anger, the officer urges the citizens to beat them down. The citizens agree, clubs raised, voices tinged with rebellion. On the far end of the street, Capulet, hot-tempered and belligerent, calls for his sword, his eyes set to attack. Across the street, Montague storms out, his wife clinging to, onto him, pleading for peace. Montague disregards her and moves to fight. So you can see that I've used a couple of the different, a couple of the different modifiers here. I don't have examples of all of them here, but I do have a couple that we did talk about. For example, let's draw your eyes to followed by citizens arms, armed with clubs. We've got followed here working as a past participle. So this here is now that participial, Particip there's a P there, P-L, sorry, phrase. Okay, so we're using, I'm using that participial phrase, and in this case I'm using that past participle to tell you who comes in and follows the officer of the law, right? So I'm using it, using an action verb to, to show that there is, to show that there's a rush of people coming in, that the officer of the law isn't the only one coming in, but there are people coming in with him. Let's take, 
let's take a look at our next set of examples and I want to draw your eyes here to the citizens agree, clubs raised, voices tinged with rebellion. This, these now are examples of our absolute, which I will remind you are the ones that have the nouns, including the participle, a participle of a verb, and possibly with some additional objects or modifiers. So in this case, we have clubs raised, right? These are typically missing that like helping verb in the middle. Clubs were raised, voices were tinged with rebellion. And it paints a picture for us in this case, the citizens agree, right? And this paints a picture for us of what the citizens look like, what they sound like even, right? Voices tinged with rebellion. And again, it gives us a little bit more detail. It draws our eye to the it draws our eye to those specific characteristics of these characters. The last one I actually have for you is an example of the two adjectives after a noun. And let's draw your eyes very quickly over here to capulet, hot tempered, and belligerent. All right. So this very effectively draws your eye to Capulet and this very close-up image of him being very angry, right? It's not an angry face, but close enough. So he's very, he should be angry. He's hot-tempered and belligerent, right? So it paints this picture for us. It gets us to close up really quickly and imagine Capulet before, right before we get into the whole explanation that he's now calling for his sword and he's set to attack. Okay, and this last set here I want to draw your eyes to is another version of the participial, participial phrases, or actually this here would be an absolute, right? Wife clinging to him. And the, the second part would then be your participial. Okay, so you see how in this example, the short example, I've already included one, two, three, four. I've included the four sentences that require use of modifiers and I've used three different types. What I'm missing here is the appositive. There are no nouns that I renamed or identified once again, but you can see how the phrases give us a little bit more information about the particular characters, about how they're performing particular actions, and in general, it slows down the writing for us. It doesn't just throw image after image at us. We're able to really develop the images in the text. So let's quickly recap. Okay, so in narrative prose, oops, that was my mouse. In narrative prose, we use modifiers in order to do a couple of things, right? We use them to slow down writing, first of all. It does no good to write in all choppy sentences because then your images don't come through very well. And we use these to vary our sentence structure. Where did it go? There we are. Sentence structure. Now, the use of modifiers draws eyes to our images. And it helps the readers to see what is important to the or er, to the author. What is there we go. What is important to 
okay? And you can use the different types that we've talked about. If you need a little bit of a recap, quickly go back to the other two and see examples and look at examples of the four modifier types. But you could always just include regular phrases. You can see there that I used a couple of participial phrases, a couple of dependent and subordinate clauses. These are still available for you to use as well. Just know that the effect still works in the same way. You are still slowing down your writing and varying your sentence structure in order to gain the interest. Gain interest of the reader. Okay, so if you still have questions or are still confused about it, please leave a message on the bulletin board or leave a message on this YouTube video. Okay, thank you for watching.